So, basically, I am really upset, as usual. Um, I'm still just trying to decipher all of this kind of narcissism stuff, basically. So, I got into a fight the other day. Now, I am a cluster B kind of personality, okay? I've been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Um, they've tried to diagnose me with schizophrenia and things like this. Um, this all kind of started to manifest when I was very young and then I had a car accident and it sort of made it worse basically so I damaged the nerve I, I damaged a lot of nerve uh, in my neck um, and that that really is brain, brain damage basically so um, peripheral brain damage um, I could talk about that all day so I was I was labeled I was I was diagnosed with cluster B personality so okay that made my transition really really difficult as you can imagine it's bloody hot today and I'm sitting here uh, it's really difficult transitioning is difficult anyway okay because you have to deal with narcissism you have to deal with it because everything about narcissism comes down to um, not just how you feel about yourself and how much you love yourself but also how other people view you and so you and, and smear campaigns and things like this are designed specifically to, to uh, target people who are transitioning and you know discredit them and this that, and this so the fact that I was diagnosed with cluster B almost made it impossible from the beginning basically so I knew I had my work cut out for me I was basically unemployable I didn't have any money I had savings and stuff like this but I knew it wasn't going to get me very far and I knew that I was just going to be drained dry and I was desperately just looking for that maybe one person who was going to give me a, a leg up you know a hand up give me that that almighty job that I was waiting for you know but again being cluster B makes it really difficult because even if I even when I did meet people my personality kind of got in the way because I just didn't trust them and also when you meet narcissists you know they tend to be able to pick up on weakness so the fact that they could sense that you know I was dis crippled I was disabled um, you know, it's just, it's minor brain damage, but it is still brain damage, and a narcissist will will put will will focus on that, right? So, um, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, basically. Um, <clears throat> so basically. Uh, I got to the point where I had started to get really I'd started to break down mentally really and um, I'd started to kind of start to feel really bad in myself really negative towards myself as well as other people and narcissists were starting to really kind of pick up on this actually and um, oh, you can see a bit of that's not good so yeah <laughs> This is just vanity, vanity. Vanity shouldn't ever be um, mistaken with narcissism. We're all allowed to look good. We're, we should all be able to look our best. Narcissism is about attacking the personality of the actual person, trying to drag them down, trying to make them manipulate them into doing things, okay? That's what narcissism is. So basically, <clears throat> it means Narcissists don't have the ability to self-love really. They don't have the ability to kind of look at themselves and go Oh, I am beautiful. Or, I am amazing and oh, yeah, all of that stuff or, I've got a sock on my head and it looks great Because narcissists can't do that Anyway, I got into a fight the other day Now first of all I have about 15 This isn't even a scarf. Look, it's a shirt 
that's why it's not working. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so um, it doesn't fit me anymore because I'm fat. Uh, <laughs> so, and I don't have any scissors so I can't cut it up. I just need to get my hair out of my fucking face. It's so hot. Anyway. <clears throat> so, um, I need a scarf. I need a proper head scarf. Anyway, so, uh, that'll do. Great. Right, so, yeah, I got into a fight. Now, I am a mixed martial artist, okay? I started training when I was about seven years old. Uh, I started karate when I was seven. I moved on to, um, uh, kung fu when I was, um, about 12 years old. And, you know, I wanted to, you know, be like Bruce Lee. I wanted to be like Jackie Chan. And, um, yeah. So, I started doing uh, kind of Wing Chun and stuff like that. By the time I was about 16, I was teaching my own classes. Uh, I wasn't teaching my own classes. The, the instructor, I, w I was learning the forms. Uh, I'd learned the forms so well that I was instructing the new people who would come into the class so that the, 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 the top, tier kind of people in the class you know like the the black sashes and all of that um, they could carry on with their kind of more advanced work Tai Chi as well um, you know I was Tai Chi doing Tai Chi I, I, you know I'd mastered the short form the long form so when new students would come in I would teach them the beginning steps of the form and then you know the teacher would come over and correct where I've gone wrong basically so by the time I was 18, I was kind of teaching classes. I was, you know, I was teaching by the time I was 16. I'd started my own classes when I was about 18, and I actually had quite a, a decent kind of class um, with really nice uh, gr group of people that I'd met along the way, and we had a really fantastic sensei, a really fantastic kind of um, uh, teacher, you know, sifu teacher sensei, someone who was there to kind of give us encouragement, you know. Um, because we were just sort of having fun. That's where the mixed martial arts came in because we came from all different so like Aikido, Karate, I did Karate, I did Aikido as well, I did Tai Chi, I did so done kickboxing, Taekwondo, um, you know, so I picked up all of these different bits of martial arts and we were fantastic and, and I was training, training, training. I, I got into an act, the car accident when I was 21, I hurt my neck and I really fucked up. So, that was my kind of like, I did wrestling as well, that was my wrestling career over, that was my martial arts career over. But I still kept up with my Tai Chi, I still kept up with my yoga, and I still kind of tried to, um, you know, keep up with my self, basically, as best I could. And I did that until I was about 26. So I have about, I haven't trained, I'm 36 now, and I haven't trained seriously since about 2008. So that would be, maybe I was 27 then. So I had been training for about 20 years in martial arts, right? Now, I know as a martial artist my limits, my limits, my abilities and my capability. Now, I'm not going to start a fight with someone who's 7 foot tall, right? Um, I mean, I could, I, I could probably hold my own against someone who's seven foot tall but I'm pretty sure that they would kill me right so um, yeah I got into a fight the way that this fight was happening was really really one of these situations you just don't want to be in okay so basically what happened was uh, this girl had started on me she was drunk I was drunk I started you know fuck off you piece of shit it's you know mouthing off letting myself be manipulated this is what narcissists do right they, they manipulate you okay so you know I was letting myself manip being manipulated I was reacting instead of um, I was reacting instead of uh, processing breathing and kind of going okay fine and just walking away and her boyfriend kept pushing me against the wall and then she kept on slapping me and then this other girl came in and then they were slapping her and then her boyfriend kept on pushing me up at the wall and then I kept on trying to walk away and then she slapped me again and then her other friend came in and she slapped me and then this 
this girl came over again to try and help me and they kept on hitting her and they hit her and I just punched her in the face I just said stop hitting her and I punched her and then her friend was like what and then I punched her in the face as well and her boyfriend grabbed me and pushed me up against the wall this is where this is where the transphobia this is where the sexism comes in because it came oh you're a member you're a man you don't hit women because you're a man sexist okay now I am not one of these equalitarians egalitarian I, I am egalitarian but I'm not inequality I knew as soon as I punched that girl I'd fucked up not because she was a girl because she was weaker than me now I'm a martial artist one of the things that my Sifu always used to say to me is never you're you are if you are the stronger person in the fight if you're if your opponent is weaker than you be the bigger person walk away okay because if you know you can hurt them then don't hurt them yeah be the bigger person right? and I wasn't the bigger person in that situation right she'd hit me several times around the face and I'd just gone I've had enough you know she's hitting this girl as well every time I tried to walk away her boyfriend kept pushing me up against the wall the whole point of the narcissist game is to try and manipulate you so as I was getting manipulated the more I was letting myself be manipulated yeah the more I was wasn't able to walk away I kept on freezing up that's really important as well because when you're freezing up it comes back to that childhood kind of trauma of knowing that you're completely alone and I was completely alone because I, I had never been to this club before I didn't know anyone I had no friends there I was completely on my own I had this guy with his a uh, hand up against my throat, pushing me against the wall. I had his girlfriend coming up, slapping me in the face every five seconds. <clears throat> they were, you know, saying, "Well, I, you know, I, I made some offhanded comment to this black guy. I was just like white people, and he was like, really?" And I was just like, "Fuck it, I don't care." <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm just at this point. I'm just so upset. I'm so pissed off, and it's and the thing is, all the trouble I always seem to get is from this type of girl this blonde haired little girl and her bearded lumberjack type boyfriend right you know he's trying to prove he's not gay by you know wearing a beard big beard and stuff like that and I'm a man and he pushed me up against the wall when I punched his girlfriend goes, don't forget you're a man I was like I was about to punch him I just pushed myself out get the fuck off of me as I felt like turning around to him don't forget you're just a faggot with a beard <laughs> I didn't say that because I think you know that would have just enraged him even more right because at this point he's trying he's so desperate to prove he's not gay he's not gay right so desperate he's got his girlfriend who's kind of validating enabling him you know and he's you know putting on this manly 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 front and he just can't accept this kind of natural you know and the more he kind of attacks his femininity the more he makes himself gay do you see what I mean that's the sad thing about it right he just can't accept this kind of natural fet feminine spirit within him he's got to attack it and he's got to um, he's got to really emphasize his masculinity by getting a girl and going right you, I'm gonna fuck you and that will make me not gay and that's horrible position to be in for for anyone because it's self-hating you see and narcissists are self-hating like he doesn't have the ability and she feeds off of that they're a neighbor it's a codependent really really bad relationship so but i let myself get into the situation i punched him in the face and i feel i don't feel a fucking thing about it this is the thing i've been punched in the face so many times by people I've been punched in the face by men who are bigger than me. I've been punched in the face by women who are bigger than me. I've been punched in the face by slapped in the face by women. Punched in the face. I've been fucking beaten up. I've, I've had. I've been into. I've been in too many fights for my liking. And at this particular point, when I was standing there, this girl just carried on fucking hit. hit she kept on slapping me, and I kept on going, "For fuck's sake, not again!" And I was just like, "I could weather that," but I couldn't walk away. The guy had me up against the wall, and I kept on trying to get myself off of him. And I don't know what it was about it that made me not punch him, because I think that it was this kind of, because he was bigger than me. He was about, you know, much much bigger. I'm about five foot eight, and he is about like six foot three, and he had me like that. And I kind of knew if I punched him, you know, he'd 
just attack because that is exactly what he wanted he just needed the excuse but I punched his girlfriend instead and he wasn't sure what to do so he was just like don't forget you're a man I was like it's not about being a man okay it's about being responsible with the power that you've got and he's not and neither is she and people like that aren't narcissists are not responsible Narcissists never take responsibility for their actions. Narcissists will blame other people and they will go, Oh, you made me do this, you made me do this. She kept on hitting me, she kept on hitting this girl had come over a few times actually, and every time she kind of came over to try and grab me away from these guys, they kept on pushing me up against the wall. Her friends would come along, slap her, and in the end I was just like, just don't fucking hit her again, and I punched her right in the face. And I felt absolutely nothing because she deserved it at that point she'd, she'd hit me several times she'd hit her several times and I punched her in the face um, the problem about it is is that I as a as a martial artist I needed I, I, I should have taken I, I you know I need to take responsibility for that nobody made me punch her I wanted to punch her and I fucking did because she deserved it but then here's the thing about the narcissist's kind of complex, especially like, um, especially like someone like me who has cluster B, is when you're in a situation where you're being manipulated. When you're in a situation when you're when you're when you're being manipulated by people, yeah, um, you the part of you, the empathic part of you, knows that. All right, okay, I know that what I'm doing right now is wrong. I don't want to be punched in the face. I don't want to be slapped in the face. She's doing it to me, right? And here's the thing. That's almost... If, if you don't do anything back, that's almost giving them permission to carry on doing it. And that's exactly what was happening. She just kept kept, kept on doing it, kept on doing it, kept on doing it. And uh, I couldn't get away because I was being pushed up against the wall. And so I was stuck against being pushed up against the wall and being slapped in the face. And I was kind of like, not sure what to do. And I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to be doing here? Like, I'm trying to walk away. I'm trying to get away from the situation. But I'm being pushed up against the wall. I'm being attacked. The only person who's kind of on my side is also, at is also being attacked. I've got to defend myself. And then I just thought, right, I've had enough, and I punched the, the I punched the protagonist, and I took responsibility. As soon as that, I took responsibility for myself and, and my protection in that that moment. I needed to walk away, but I wasn't being allowed to walk away, so I was being manipulated into fighting. So that's the thing where you'll find that narcissists will manipulate, and and the end game of that was they needed to manipulate me into fighting so that the narrative for this particular kind of self-hating self-loathing gay man was that he could go you're not really a woman you're a man and um i just kind of said to him i just kind of you know say look if you really want me okay to be a man right and not a woman that says way more about your sexuality than anything i do because I present as a woman as best I can. I may not be the most beautiful and I may not be the most intelligent or smart and I'm definitely am the, probably one of the most hairiest and sweatiest but I present as a woman right so if you want me to be a man and you're a man and you're projecting onto me that you want me to be a man that means that you're gay yeah because other men when they see me Right, straight men, when they see me, they kind of go, oh wow, a woman. And then maybe they're a bit kind of even kind of confused, like, wait, are you, are you, are you like trans? Are you, like, they'll, they'll usually go, are you a man? Or are you, the intelligent ones will go, are you, are you trans? And I'll go, yeah. And they'll kind of go, oh, cool. That's cool, actually. Like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's what, like, progressive men do. And the thing is, it doesn't matter if they're, um, you know how they act and how they look right what it is is in their mind they go they want to be a woman brilliant more women for me because men think like that right they don't think um of anything they don't feel like their sexuality is being attacked because they're so confident in themselves yeah similarly to women women don't see me as a threat because they're very confident in their own sexuality 
Uh, I don't think any woman would ever see me as a threat. I mean, especially, you know, I'm, I don't have all of the, the, the bits, do I? Really? <laughs> so I, can't, I don't have that trump card. Um, but yeah, and you know, it's only the women who attack. It's only the it's only the narcissist really who attacks because they're so um, they're so insecure about themselves. You see, so they'll attack other people and they'll try to what they'll do is the narrative they'll try and change the narrative and then try and impose this narrative onto this person so that's what it is about narcissism so you gotta remember right you can do bad things you know you're you're gonna regret them there's consequences as well right you're gonna behave badly you're gonna act badly you're gonna end up doing the wrong thing right but you're not going to you know you're, not, you're you're learning to not do that to not let them do that to you not let them manipulate you like that right but you've got to recognize that the reason why they're doing this is because they have no self-worth yeah they the only way that a narcissist gets self-worth is by destroying someone else okay so that's why they have smear campaigns right and 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 the thing is if you're if you're a cluster b if you're a um borderline if you have some kind of, um, you know, trauma in your past um, that you're dealing with, you know, and, you know, people know how to trigger that, narcissists will as well, because they'll, they'll go after the things. So, for example, um, you know, they will try to... Um, you know they'll always try to switch and turn around the narrative they'll always try to turn themselves into the victims they never ever take responsibility for their own actions okay they'll never stand there and go oh yeah yeah I, um you know they'll, they'll always they'll always go no 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 it was them they did it they'll always point the finger and they'll always try and change the narrative always okay that's what narcissists do so one thing this is why it's hard because if you manipulate right so what i did is i punched this woman in the face right punched her in the face she deserved it right but then i still got to carry the responsibility of what i've done there i've just punched someone in the face doesn't matter if she was a woman or a man or fucking shark or whatever it doesn't matter what i've done is i've used my power to hurt somebody and that's not who i want to be so that's what it comes down to that's not who I am. I am not someone who goes around looking for trouble. I am not someone who goes around trying to hurt people on purpose, yeah? I am someone who is manipulated into reacting and then I've got to carry that responsibility. So, you know, what you don't want to end up being is you don't want to end up being in the position where you're manipulated. The, the narcissist is always going to be able to manipulate you, okay? So you've got to think of it like chess because they want you to play. They want you to play their game and they want you to play by their rules yeah and they win that's how they win so there's a there's you'll hear this this is how you can spot a narcissist yeah they'll say there's no point in playing with a pigeon because it will just shit all over the board and pretend it's one even though you've won something along those lines right what that saying is is ah oh, because you're refusing to play my game i've won automatically and because you're refusing to play my game by my rules that makes me better than you no what you do is you go no i'm not playing your game your game is shit yeah and i'm not playing it okay so what what they're all they're trying to do is they're trying to lure you into playing again they're trying to attack your ego they're trying to attack your sense of self right they're trying to attack you from going uh, you're not going to offend me. I'll play your game, and then they win, right? You take a massive fucking shit on that board. You be that pigeon. Be the pigeon. Shit all over the board, and then you'll hear the narcissist go, "Ha ha! Well, I won the game, but they're just shitting all over the board." Ha ha ha! Right. So what you've got to do is you just got to go. No, not playing your game. As far as I'm concerned, this game that you're playing is shit. It's a toilet for me to shit in. Okay, and then boom you just don't you you win right because you win by not playing that's how you win against the narcissist you don't play their games and you'll see so many youtubers going this is how you get the better of a narcissist this is how you win against the narcissist this is how you manipulate a narcissist no 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 you don't manipulate narcissists they manipulate you yeah you play their game you lose so don't play 
That is the only way to win. Anybody else who tells you different is lying to you. Yeah, that's an important lesson because you're going to find that people are all liars. Yeah, and I will show you anybody who says they don't lie, they're a liar. Yeah. In, in all of my life, in all of my life, the only truth I've ever truly learned, the only truth, there is only one truth that I've learned, we are all liars, yeah? And if you ever meet anyone that says I don't lie, that's a liar right there, yeah? So you just remember that. You, you never forget that if someone's trying to say to you, that, no, this is the truth, this is the truth. No, they're lying. They're lying. If you meet someone who goes, all right, well, I'm a liar, okay, so I don't expect you to trust anything I say, but I'm going to try and kind of be as, you know, honest. And honesty comes from being authentic. So auth authenticity doesn't necessarily mean how you dress. It means being honest with yourself, yeah? So when you fuck up, as bad as it is, you've got to take that. You've got to take it. So nobody else can carry your mistakes. Only you can carry your mistakes, right? So in martial arts, i am use that example a lot. In the martial arts, when you, oh, like right now, I'm, li I'm lying like this, right? Because I don't really want to, but it's giving me backache, yeah? So who do I have to blame? Me, yeah? Because I'm lying like this, right? I'm lying down, I'm twisted, my body's kind of going this way, and I'm hurting, and then my rib is hurting. Who am I going to blame? Me! I'm going to blame me because I'm the one that's fucking lying here like this, yeah? It's, it's partly vanity because I don't want my hairy legs showing and I don't want my all my bad bits showing, but, right? I've only got myself to blame for this pain that I'm feeling right here, right? So if I, if I, ah, so if I, if I'm sitting like this, yeah, it may look a bit weird, but it's less painful for me. So I could always just move my laptop. There we go. See, that's clever, isn't it? So if you're doing something wrong, instead of blaming someone else for it, instead of blaming someone else for your problems, right? You take responsibility for your problems, you admit where you're going wrong in life, and then you change it. You don't carry on doing the same fucking thing, yeah? That is self-defeating. So if I carry on just doing the rest of the YouTube video like that and hurting my back, and then complain about other people, like, no, that makes you an idiot. It doesn't make you a smart person to be blaming other people for things that you've done wrong. So, yeah. However, the narcissist will always try and manipulate you. The narcissist is always going to try and get you into the position where you betray yourself, you betray your integrity, betray your own uh, principles, your heart. They'll get you to betray yourself over and over again. And after a while, just like sitting here like this and my back hurting, right, after a while, you just think, oh yeah, that's just normal, that's normal, normal, normal. No, it's not, it's not normal, yeah? Normal people don't put themselves through pain, yeah? Because putting yourself through pain um, on purpose is, is ridiculous. Growth is painful. In yoga, in martial arts, growth can be painful. When you're doing push-ups, when you're doing press-ups, when you're getting through, pushing through to the next level of yoga after you've done a good, um, you know, uh, sal sun salutation and then you're resting in Savasana, you know, you're going, oh yeah, my body feels fantastic, you know, because I managed to push through that next level of yoga, I managed to do, you know, five, uh, five rotations sun salutation instead of three this time or you know this time I did two push-ups instead of three uh, three push-ups instead of two I did you know five sit-ups instead of one so it hurts a little but then it feels good right but putting yourself in pain on purpose without growing that's just hurting yourself for no reason so don't even bother with that don't put yourself through this kind of nightmare so um, yeah basically um, people are going to always look at you, 
I know how people look at me. I, I know that people look at me like I'm ugly. I know how people, the beauty standards that we have in this world, people look at me and they don't think I'm beautiful by their standards. By my standards, I'm fucking amazing. I look at myself in the mirror and I just think, oh yeah, I'm totally fucking hot, right? But what they see is something completely different. And that goes on to the other thing is, what other people see and how you see yourself are two different things, okay? So whereas I'm comfortable in my own body for the most part, <laughs> Transitioning is really difficult and there's some a lot, a lot of things that I'd like to change if I can because basically you know a lot of it comes down to financial and um, you know physical capability you know uh, but those are the things that I, I, I'm working on changing as much as all of the other things that I'm working on changing on the inside so it's 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 a it's a two two prong process. You know, you you can just like the, you know, I'm not even going to say it, but like, there's no point in fixing the outside if the inside's still broken, basically. You know, uh, but you can fix the outside and then work on the inside later. I suppose you could do it that way, but the the point is to be mindful with that. If you do just kind of like work on your external self and you just wear makeup and only makeup, but you you let your internal self just suffer. Um, I hate to kind of use the example, but I will because it is a very good example of cosmetic surgery of where Grenfell Tower, the Grenfell Tower fire was an eight and a half million pound refurbishment on the outside of the building, not an eight and a half million pound refurbishment on the inside of the building, which would have mattered. It would have saved lives, it would have saved a building, it would have made people a lot happier as well because of the things that were wrong, like all of the things that were wrong. And instead of spending eight and a half million pounds working on the inside of themselves, working on the inside of Grenfell Tower, they spent eight and a half million pounds on the outside of themselves and that is why the, the Grenfell Tower was as bad as it was because it ended up being a really beautiful tower that burnt from the inside out. So you don't want to be that kind of person, right? And um, and you shouldn't. You should always work on your inside, inner self. Always work on your in, inner self before you work. Not before. Not even before. You can do them, but at the same time, like I feel like, you know, if you had eight and a half million pounds, you could have done all of the inside work and enough for the outside work. But they they they. They decided to only spend on the outside and not any on the inside. So that's why they failed um, as, as a kind of company, parent company, who just didn't look after themselves. So as, as yourself, looking after yourself, you've got to look after yourself. You've got to think, all right, okay, so that's the thing with my transition. It's like, yeah, I had money, I had money, but where was I going to put the money? On the outside? where it wouldn't have made any difference or on the inside where it needed to be so you can't really spend money on the inside right but what it is is you put yourself into the situation where you as a person can kind of go right I have this money what is gonna make me feel better on the inside is it gonna be uh, changing my face is it gonna be you know you know getting uh, this that and the other or is it gonna be Right, I'm going to, you know, book myself into a yoga retreat and I'm going to really, really work on my inner integrity and self and strength. Or, you know, I'm going to spend that money on, you know, making my face look more worthy of a magazine cover rather than a face that is worthy of yourself. So that's the thing about it, right? That is the, for me, that's the thing that makes like transition so difficult because so many people fall into the trap of going, oh, I'll work on my outside first, then I'll work on my inside, and then you get a Grenfell Tower, and then it's just like, wow, you see, now you've just, you've burnt up from the inside, and now that's all gone. You know, it's all for nothing. Um, so yeah, basically, um, you know, I know I, I, there's so much I want to get done on the outside, you know, it's a slow process, right? Because a lot of it is, you know, hard work and a lot of it is earning that money and earning money when, you know, basically people see you as unemployable 
um, and you know I'm the kind of person who punches people in the face it's not it's something to be proud of this isn't someone that you want to hire um, this is ah. Uh, oh, what's on your resume? So you like punching people in the face? Yes, <laughs> yes I do. <laughs> you're hired. <laughs> no, you're not. So um, yeah, it's it's not funny. I'm laughing because it's actually it's not funny. It's like a divine comedy. Um, no, I, I don't want to be the kind of person who punches people in the face. Um, I didn't want to punch that girl in the face. But she was just so violent and she was so aggressive and she just carried on going, carried on going up. You know. I just, I just, I just punt, I just, you know, I lost my cool, um, and so yeah, basically, when we, when we come to the, the idea of, of who we are, um, always be authentic, always be true to yourself, always kind of say, look, yeah, you know, you know, look, and as, it's hard. Uh, we learn this as kids as well. This is the thing about being kids. We learn to lie very early on because we know we're going to get into trouble. So it's important. I know that sometimes there's consequences to your actions, you know, that you do or wrong and there's consequences and you have to own up for them because, you know, other people are like, you know, you know, like for, for you know, for, um, you know, crimes you know, <laughs> against humanity. Um, but the thing about it, is when you fuck up whatever it is yeah it's important to to not be scared to 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 own that as hard as it is to own it kind of go okay i've owned that i'm owning that you know and um it's difficult uh it's difficult to own the the bad parts of yourself the bad parts of yourself are still good parts of your stuff they're still they make up who you are you know, the whole every every rose has a thorn is true. You know, you can dethorn a rose, but it's it's not it's not any less of a rose, but it's not an authentic rose, is it? Because roses have thorns naturally in the world. I think I think not all species of roses have. They might. I don't know enough about them. See, this is the thing. Admit where you admit where your knowledge ends, because. You can know about yourself, but you may not know about the world around you. You know, being ignorant of, like, roses in general. Like, I know that roses have thorns in the wild. I've seen uh, most of the rose bushes that I've seen in the wild have thorns. But I could be wrong. There could be a species of rose that grows naturally without thorns. And that's why they breed them without thorns. Or, I don't know. I don't, just don't know enough about um, roses, you see. I don't know enough about anything. You know what I know is is nothing in comparison to what the scope of actually is in the universe to know. So you know my knowledge is like me nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. And then on the other side, it's what do I know about myself? I know a lot about myself. Um, what do I know about other things? <sighs> Pretty much fuck all to be honest. Especially other people because other people are very guarded. So it's it's difficult to meet someone who you know really kind of lowers the defense lowers the mask and kind of goes you know because they're, they're they're just so easy to be attacked right shit i don't want to be attacked i don't want to be hurt you know but also you know kind of you know and and here's the thing is that i know i know that there may be two people will watch this <laughs> and and it'll all be you're a hairy ugly man and i'm sorry for you if that's what you want out of me <laughs> If you want me to be a hairy, ugly man, I'm sorry that you want me to be a hairy, ugly man. Because that makes, that means that that's what you want from me. You don't see, you don't want me to be a beautiful woman. You want me to be a hairy, ugly man for you. And it's not, you know, I'm not saying all men are ugly or hairy. I'm saying that it's the projecting thing, right? It's, um, it's, I'm trying to project an image. I'm trying to project my image of who I am. As an authentic person, a bit crazy, <laughs> and not perfect by a long shot, you know. Um, but yeah, if you're projecting onto me that you want me, or that you know, I have to admit something about me because you want me to be a man. If you're a man and you want me to be a man, 
I've got some bad news for you, buddy. <laughs> I've got some bad news for you, buddy. Um, you know, if you're a woman, I think it's probably a little bit more of a struggle, isn't it? Because a lot of it is like, I want masculinity, but what is masculinity, really? What is a man? Nothing but a miserable pack of lies. So, masculinity is strength, right? Is that inner strength? Is that outer strength? A lot of my work has been about inner strength. I worked on my outer strength for so long, I became very physically strong, but I became very weak on the inside. And I could feel this weakness happening. So, a lot of my, my work, a lot of my work is about inner work, about becoming stronger, about being able to say no, about being able to walk away, about being able to say, all right, okay, um, you know, you, know you, 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 you have tried to pierce my heart, you've tried to hurt me. You know, I like, I understand, and I hear your anger, and I can hear that you like hate, and your hate is uh, at, directed at me. Like, you hate that I've got hair on my arms, or you hate that I have a little bit of hair on my lip, or you hate that I have hairy legs, or you hate that I have scars, and you hate, 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 hate. And the inner strength is just kind of going, I know, I can, I can understand, and I can hear that your hate but I am not like going to accept any of those things about like me because um, that's just you projecting hate onto me about the things that you hate about me. I don't necessarily like having hair, you know. It's one of the things that I'm trying to save up to get done because I don't like hair. It, I've got like a, a, a condition of, called folliculitis which kind of makes hair uh, infected my uh, skin so I get spots all over my body so getting rid of hair for me was has been a health issue as well as more as much as a as much as a vanity thing because you know it means that I get I get less spots now you know because I used to get very bad spots that's where I've got all the acne scars um, so getting rid of the hair means I don't get spots anymore it means I don't get infections anymore it means I don't get scars all over my chest and all over my face anymore so that makes me feel confident that makes me feel happy that's a great um, feeling as well um, you know removing the scars as well has, has always been a kind of option but that's that's a long process because removing scars is, is, is a lot harder and um, you know, sometimes people say, you know, your scars me are your journey. Um, from my perspective, you know, having acne is isn't a journey. It's 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 a curse, and I, I don't like um, curses. <laughs> no curses, please. <laughs> so, you know, I I think, and again, the whole treatment of acne is 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 as much like treatment of any illness because people don't really care about those kinds of things, so they don't focus on it. Um, they'll give you these drugs that don't work, or they or the recently they stopped one of the only drugs that do work, um, you know, and they tend to do this a lot because they want you to be ugly. They want you to be, you know, this is your journey of being ugly, and I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily say that it's it's ugly or not. I'd say that as someone who had acne when I was a kid, as opposed to having no ac, you know, less acne now. Um, and the, the treatments that I went through to get get rid of the acne, I much prefer not having acne to having acne. And I think anybody who has acne feels exactly the same. They don't want it, and they shouldn't have to go through that kind of experience. They shouldn't have to have that. And um, yeah, there's, there's there's you know that there's no there's no part of wanting a, you know that you know I, I suppose. It's, it's the only part of it is is you know it has again it's made me more confident about myself my skin isn't perfect flawless beautiful I've had I've got to accept all of these flaws in me and um, and I think that's as well that's kind of a part of like um, accepting uh, you know the flaws inside of me as well accepting that but also you know being able to change that you can change yourself from the inside you can change yourself on the outside changing yourself on the inside is as difficult as changing yourself on the outside sometimes for me I really love this thing sometimes it's as easy as just putting a nice little thing in your hair and you feel great 
and other times it's like spending a lot of money on trying to get rid of the hair that is causing you problems and giving you acne and, and causing you misery. So I feel a lot happier since that's happened. So I'm going to carry on going with that process because the more I go in the process, the more happy I am. The happier I am, the more beautiful I feel. The more beautiful I feel, the more happy I am. <laughs> and so on. And people, narcissists, hate that. They hate it. So, yeah, and they're always going to point out your flaws. Narcissists are always going to point out the things that they hate about you. They're never going to say anything nice about you. If they do say something nice about you, it's usually with a kind of like, you know, backhanded compliment like, oh yeah, you're so beautiful for an ugly person. <laughs> you know? 